take questions for head coach Matt Painter. Uh, once again, raise your hand. We'll get back to you. Matt, I, I asked Fletch, um, you've got all these young guys here. How has practice changed for you going from a veteran team to having all the energy from these young guys? Yeah. I think more than anything for us, like I think like they come to practice, they want to get better. We have a very quiet group, which, you know, you can't let your, you know, personality be your competitive personality. Like you have to be able to outwardly speak and talk and communicate on the basketball floor. We struggle with that. So it's like a chore for us to, to get them to talk all the time just because of the personalities. But it doesn't mean they're not competitive because they are. But I think that's been the, the biggest hurdle for us. And, and not just our younger guys. It's really across the board. Our older guys get it, and, and they have, you know, that habit program. Um, but, and, and so like, I think that's going to be something we just have to stay on top of and, and keep fighting to keep fighting somebody to, to be able to, to speak, especially on the defensive end. Matt, two years ago, you, you played Fletcher and Brayton out of necessity as much as ability. Now you have them to kind of mentor two freshman guards who mm -hmm. clearly physically look like they're ready to do this. How much more of a benefit is that, that you kind of have that natural progression from those two down to Jakari and CJ? Yeah, I, I think it, you know, it gives us that flexibility more than anything. Um, where CJ can play two spots, Jakari can play two spots um, when we get into a bind, right? And uh, obviously the ball is going to be in Braden's hand a lot. And uh, Fletch is a very cerebral player and understands things. So, um, you know, I think young guys, it's it's great for them, but sometimes they don't like, you know, now you've got coaches that are always telling you stuff. And you know, you've got players that are always telling you stuff. Everybody's always like, trying to let you know what to do. Uh, but if you've ever been in that position and you, you know, you had to swim out in that pond, you know, all by yourself, like you, you, you tend to appreciate when people are trying to help you get through it. More of a preventive measure than anything is that trying to talk people through it before it happens. So now you don't have to learn from your own mistakes, but most human beings have to learn from their own mistakes. But Fletch is great and Braden's great in that area. Uh, they understand it. They, they both kind of send their message differently. Bradens can be over competitive, overly competitive, um, which is all right. That's who he is. Um, Fletch is a little bit more diplomatic. I wouldn't say he's diplomatic, but he's more diplomatic than Braden. Um, but that's okay. But as long as the message is the same, you know, you got to be yourself, and it's got to be your own delivery. For a team with a bunch of young guys out there, some guys playing different positions, so is this pretty sharp in your view? Um, you look at things like only five turnovers from the rotation right. guys. Be efficient on offense if you got it. Right. Uh, 23 to 26 in the foul line. Is this pretty clean for people? Yeah, anytime, even the other night, like, you know, when we had seven turnovers at Creighton, like, if you can keep that, you know, in that area right there, you're always going to give yourself a chance. Um, and then if you can rebound the basketball, too, you're going to win the game. You're rarely ever going to lose if you can dominate the glass like that and only have five or seven turnovers. So, um, yeah, we work, we work really hard at it. Um, obviously, the, the thing that we probably got the most from this game was just their quickness, their, their ability to uh, push the basketball and, and break us down, and then their ability to put pressure on the ball. Like their their on-ball defenders were real. And obviously, we had a size and, and, and execution. You know, we had a size advantage and an execution advantage just because we had a lot of guys that have been together um, before and they understand what we run and what we do. Even though we're sprinkling in young guys, We've still been on it here for about five months. You know, you, you should be, after five months, you, know, you, you should be able to play the game without turning it over. 53 points in the first half, uh, but only six of 31 shots came at the rim. Given your personnel this year, is that a shot diet that you're comfortable with, yeah. with from a process standpoint, or would you prefer the guards and wings to try to get downhill more? I, I would prefer to be at the rim more, you know, just because we all know that. There's days that your jumper doesn't go in, right? And even though like we weren't, um, we were not crazy with eight to twenty-two from three, but we still like we, we shot a lot of pull-ups, um, and, and that's what I talk about. I talk about a lot um, when we start a season. I do a seminar on shot selection, and I really try to break it down. But everybody's not the same, and so I talked about like those those pull-up contested twos early in the clock or things that you don't want. But I'd be a fool if I didn't let C.J. Cox shoot, right? I mean, he just has such a nice pull-up game. 
And so, like, I, I, I mention it to them. And so sometimes you'll, when you do that, like, you know, people want to, players want to think in theory, well, he does this. Why can't I do this? Well, he's proven that he can do it at a high clip. You know, our, our, our goal is not to get off a shot. Our goal is to get a really good shot from Purdue, and, excuse me, for Purdue. But, like, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to pass up something good. People always talk, we'll pass up something good to get something great. I want to take good. It's just too hard versus like quality teams. Like you pass up a good shot, you might never get a shot in that possession, you know, as good as that. So like it's something for us that we, we want to be on the hunt, we want to be aggressive. Um, but to your point, like we need to be in the paint more, we need to, we need to get there more. Um, but, you know, threes have been a big part of what we do. And like some of the guys, you know, it's hard when you play 18 people, right? So like some of the guys, like the other night against Creighton, like you'll have people that watch you play that I say, hey, like you played UConn, like why did you like not shoot threes? And then like right away they shouldn't be allowed to talk about basketball. And they should be out of the equation. So we got them out of the fray and they can't communicate with us. Um, but it's, Creighton did the same thing. They played in a, you know, they played in a deep drop with an elite defender and so Brain's going to get more shots. We played Arizona last year. They played in the deep, deep drop. Fletch and Brain got more shots because of that. Well, that's what they want to give. They want to give that up because, like you said, they want you out of the paint. So analytically, I don't care. Like, you know, if, if you're just overpowering where you can get wherever you want at any time, then it doesn't matter. You're just the best team in the country. But very few of us are that way. So you've got to work towards getting quality shots, you know, no matter where they come from. But a big piece of it is what the defense gives you. So when the defense gives you that, take it. You know, now they're like, well, is that what you're going for? They act like you're pushing a button. Like, okay, I want a three, A. Okay, I want to pull up B. Like, it just doesn't work that way. It's competition. But schematically, this is what they're giving you. And what they're going to give us, we're going to take as long as the person that's taking it you know, has shown that he can consistently make it. I hope that makes sense. It looked like you were making a purposeful effort to get Jacobson the ball around the rim. Were you trying to get him wraps as a low post scorer to kind of see what he got there and accelerate his development a little bit? Yeah, you know, he just needs to get, you know, stronger. It reminds me a lot of, you know, like Juwan Johnson at that age. He gets his hands on a lot of things, but he's not catching a lot of things or he's not getting that rebound. He's tapping things. He has to stop tapping things and get things with two hands. He just has to keep doing heavy ball work. And um, But no, when he's there around the basket and he's got a real post up, um, he's got the guy squared up, like he needs to get the basket. Like, like any other person who is you know, five, six feet away from the basket. But um, I don't think it's like a bread and butter for us right away. Like no way, right? But like I think it's something where he really works on his dives and his seals. Now he can play with his jump hook. And he can get close enough to it. We got to get him some alley hoops. We got to get him some flip ups. Um, he's got to get on the glass. He's got to run. And um, it's hard, man. You know, it, it's hard. He, he's very promising. Him and Raleigh Burgess are both promising big guys. And um, but you know, it, it takes uh, it takes a lot of work. I think a lot of times when you look at, I mentioned Juwan Johnson or even Zebo, like you like you want to look at them for when they're 22. Like, ah, well, he's not quite like them. No, he's not quite like them when they're 22. But they do have similarities when they're both 18, 19 years old. And, like, now you got to be able to grow through it. Raleigh's got more physical piece to him. Daniel's got more length. And, and so, but they're both, they're both quality players. And it's one of those deals where they're both going to be really good. You just, you know, when are they going to be really good, right? You just got to keep working and stay positive and keep them on edge. You're not asking either uh, Jakari or CJ to be a you know, 35, 40 minute player right now. It's more like that combination. Mm -hmm. Especially as freshmen, how is that allowing them to, I guess, maximize what you're asking them yeah. to give you in those minutes? Well, I think first of all, they've got themselves in this position. This goes for any players that are out there. Like, learn to be a two-way player. Like, like, learn to affect the game if your shot doesn't go in. And, like, both of those guys can hawk the ball off. They still have to learn the nuances of defense and understand different actions and different things. They, they, they still get behind some plays in, that, in the defensive half court. Uh, but they both can go pick up the ball. They both can guard people. They both want to guard people. And then they're, you know, they're students of the game. They listen. Uh, 
uh, they like to get better, but they, they can make they can make shots. You saw Jakari a little bit today get to the rim and get a layup. He got that pull up. He made a three. Um, CJ's pull up game speaks for itself. Like he's a threat, and you need that, like especially late clock, right? You gotta get somebody that can go make a play. Um, besides Brady at that point, but um, they, they put themselves. They both have put themselves in a really good position um, with that. And then a lot of what happens, I think. Because like you guys will like right this guy will start and this guy will start. You got to form your team through your three through your three guys, right? We, we're forming our team through Great Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, and Trey Kaufman. Right? They put themselves ahead of everybody else. Doesn't mean like other people don't have value because they do. Now like who's the best with them? I think that's where Lance really helped us last year because Lance was the best. He wasn't the only player we had, but he was the best to go into that fray. And then Mason was fabulous. He's probably the best six man in the country, you know, coming off the bench. And obviously Zach, who's the, who's the best with Zach, right? And that brings your value up as you start to help everybody else. So now those two guys have really been good for Braden and Fletch. They give us two, they both of us give us another defender. They both give us quickness. They both give us a ball handler. And I think that's really, really going to help us. Now we got to get like that other spot there, right? We gotta be able to get that to where like how productive can we be? Who's the most productive? Maybe it's different game to game. It's week to week, I don't know that answer. I like all the guys that we have there. I think we have a lot of guys to throw at people, but I also think we got some people on that front line where we're gonna need them at times, but we're not gonna always need them just because we have that depth and just like I talked about. How will you evaluate your team defensively? Knowing that it was a different competition. Level. Yeah, I think it starts with um, being able to handle the pressure. I thought those guys, I, right away, I, I said to those guards whenever they got it, like, hey, man, like, those guys were real up there on the ball. Like, they were quick. They were hawking the basketball. So I, that's the first and foremost for me in terms of just, you know, seeing it live during the game before we're watching the film is I thought we did a good job of handling somebody that's going to come after us and just hawk the basketball um, more than that. They ran more of a five out, kind of a spread, and we were able to kind of stay in, and they never got going shooting the basketball, so we never had to move and, and, and adjust to that. So, but we'll see, like, we'll, we'll watch film and, and kind of go from there. I, I talked to our guys about it, I said, like, you'll face so many people where there's, like, more similarities than differences, but you're still gonna have differences. And now each style can, can you know, kind of show some weaknesses where the previous style and through a couple of exhibition games, you've played several different guys at the center spot. I guess just what have you learned about that that position yeah. for your team right now? I think it's hard because, like, when you look at all the guys that play, um, Daniel played 14 minutes, Riley played 12 minutes, Caleb played 12 minutes, Will played 10. Right? And so it's really hard to, to, to kind of gauge. I, I think more than anything is we have a lot of options, a lot of depth there. But nobody's really separating themselves, right? And so it's hard to it's hard to comment on. You like them, but you want to see more consistency from them. I think, I think that's the key. You always give kind of um, a wait and see for somebody who hasn't done it yet. The people that have been through it before, they, they should have an advantage there. They should be able to take, you know, take care of that. But we also like when we go with like two, like four or fives, like Trey and Caleb together, if you have an elite center, and we don't have the size to combat, combat that um, as well. So I think first and foremost, like kind of thinking like, who can we be functional with offensively, and who can rebound? Like, who can like, who can get us? And it was good to see Will tonight. He got some good rebounds in there. But who can rebound at a high level for us? <coughs> defend. Um, I think that's the person that will end up separating yourself. I think you can kind of look there and say, who's got the highest ceiling? I think that's, you know what I mean? Like, you've got some young guys in the very high ceilings. But we, we got to win our game on Monday, right? It's Monday, right? Right? Come on, don't shrug, dude. You know this answer. Um, so, yeah, I think that's. But, uh, but I'm, I'm pleased. Sometimes there's not separation. It doesn't mean that they're not doing well. Like, Jakari really separated himself with just being a two way player and handling the basketball and kind of giving what we need in that spot. Um, but yet, if we play some traditional Big Ten teams, 
you know, we can play pretty and play like two wings together, right? We're like, yeah, that's going to be all right. But if you come and press us and, and do stuff like we've proven, you know, a couple of years ago, that, that, that didn't work. But going back to you saying you evaluate people as 22 year olds when they're 18, I yeah. think back to, to Trey Cotton, you redshirted, and then he wasn't even playing a lot, but you told us he was an all Big Ten caliber player in the future. Right. And <laughs> he just stayed patient. Last year, obviously, he didn't have the opportunities with Zach, but how are you seeing the payoff now with what this season could be now that he's going to have a chance of opportunities to have more games like this? Yeah, like he's, you know, the thing that he's probably done better than anything he's done in the past is his passing. You didn't really see a lot of today. He's really passing all well in practice. And we doubled him a lot. We doubled the post. They didn't post up tonight, so you don't see it. Creighton posted up a little bit, so you didn't see it much. But we like we go after him, like you know, trying to keep like a lot of the pain, try to. So he's done a great job just passing and taking those there. He's put a lot of time into his game. And that's the thing that really like you know you you got to have it right. Like you got to have the game. You just can't sit there and say, hey, I work hard. But there's got to be some results somewhere. Of course, Trey works really hard and puts in a lot of time. But you could see it in practice. You know, he would score on Zach in practice. He would make plays. You know, but we didn't run a lot for him. You know, in the NCAA tournament, like, we went to him a couple times more. You know, last year against Illinois, if he got it going a little bit, we would we'd run a couple more things. But we were, we were pretty content to run things for Green and Zach occasionally, you know, for Flash. So I think he'll get more. Yeah, I don't think he will get more. He'll get the basketball a lot more. And then it's like now, like how to utilize him, you know, because I think they got to make a decision as a post up four. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like not everybody posts their four. So, like, you know, we used to do it with Biggie and do that and really have that matchup to where now you've got your five low down there in a great rebound spot. If that guy wants to come over, you've got those easy dump down spray outs. So, like, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think he's going to have a fantastic year. <coughs> kind of segue into my question. I think he got three wide open threes in the first half, passing out help. Are his instincts there? Um, yes. Where they need to be? Yes, without question. He, he's really, he's got a um, good feel of what's going on. I think it's just kind of slowed down for him more than anything, how things come in. And I always said that when we would scrimmage. We'd scrimmage and we'd double him all the time. So I said, like, hey, you're, you, you've got to be a passer here. Like, that's just what they're giving us. Like no different than if somebody plays us in a drop, like it's just a two-on-two -two game right there. You're not going to get those threes from those wings right there. Um, when you do that, so no, he's uh, he, he's not really well. He's worked pretty well. Um, CJ seemed to kind of fall into your lap there late in the recruiting cycle, and you mentioned earlier uh, his pull-up game and being really confident in that ability already as a freshman. Was that what caught your eye initially with him when you got a chance to see him? And is that something you already have confidence in to run sets for him as a freshman? Yeah. No, he, um, I was recruiting another kid, and he just happened to play against him last game of the summer. And um, I saw him, so then I got um, with everybody and just started talking, and then I got I got the huddle password from his prep school coach. And so I watched six, seven, eight games and watched him play, and I started to dig. Um, into his background and just how he was as a person and um, dad was a great guy, prep school is a great guy, hey you guys are a great guy, like everything checked off. Everybody said the same thing about him. Tough, hard nose, education is important. Um, obviously we were really like two or three Ivy League schools for him, but he could make a pull up, he could guard, he could handle the basketball, and he was a team guy. So the thing that caught my eye was um, besides him playing well in that game, he had 26 in the game, was after it was over with, everybody on the team hugged me. And so I was like, what the hell are we hugging somebody for after an ADU game on July 27th? Like, I was like, right away. So I called the guy, I said, what's the deal, man? Like, I didn't know him, I didn't know his ADU coach. And he played the middle sex magic on the East Coast. And he said, oh, he's the greatest kid ever. We love him, he's been in our program since he was a third grader, he's worked hard. He's gotten better. So then he, he played with Brad Stevens' son the year before that. So then I was trying to get Brad Stevens' son to walk on. He went to the name uh, to walk on instead. So like I called Brad and he said, well, Brady will know better. So then I got Brady to talk to me. And so I got somebody close to the situation that knew him as a person and everything. And so then I recruited him. And I was just honest right there. I said, hey, I recruited this other kid. And um, 
if he doesn't take an honor from the scholarship. And I said, that turns you off and just be honest. And then it just took too long for the other kid. He just was just taking forever. And I was like, man, I really like this guy. Uh, I really think he, he would fit here. And I think he would be a great player for us. So, um, he didn't fall in my lap. I actually worked for him. <laughs> so you can call it falling in your lap. But I, there's a lot of hours right there. So, but no, you got to be able to sit there and say, of all the things that are important to you, he checks those boxes. And he's not ranked, and he's only getting offers from the Ivy League, and it doesn't matter. Being ranked doesn't matter. Who's recruiting you doesn't matter. Like, it fits. It's winning basketball. It's being around somebody that wants to get their education at Purdue, wants to play at a high level, wants to compete. He just came in and worked. He's one of those guys that carries a big stick and keeps his mouth shut, which you can't have enough of guys like that. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We were watching Eric Potting that game, right? Huh? We were watching Eric Potting that game, right? Yeah, he was in that game. He was in that game, yeah. Raleigh's in that game. Raleigh didn't play. Raleigh was hurt in that game. Yeah. Yeah. So it's Travis Perry who was with the Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>